Well guys, EVGA has done it again, bringing another hybrid card to their lineup. They've already got the 980, 980 Ti, and Titan X hybrid cards. Well, now we're taking a look at their brand new 970 hybrid. The Lickmax 2 120 and 240 from Enermax is another awesome choice of AIO liquid coolers for gamers and enthusiasts without breaking the bank. Patented shunt channel technology provides extra layer of cooling capability. Click the link below to find out more. I'll admit, I was a little confused when they asked me if I wanted to check out the 970 Hybrid because I thought, the card is over a year old. You've already got a 980, 980Ti, and Titan X Hybrid. Does it make sense for someone to buy a water-cooled 970 instead of taking that extra money and putting into, say, a 980? Well, when I asked them that, they responded with, well, the 970 Hybrid is only $399, making the 980, even a reference-style 980, $100 more expensive than this option. Maybe this makes sense. So I thought, yeah, definitely worth taking a look at to see if this thing at 100 bucks less than a 980 makes sense. Now I'm not doing a specific 980 comparison with this today. I'm gonna to be doing that in the future because if I did a 980 comparison today, and then a video like I'm gonna to do today about its overclocking and water cooling setup on here, the video would have been way too long. And as I fear, this video is already gonna be long. So there will be a future video about this thing versus 980 and other brand options, uh, specifically from AMD in the same price point to see how this thing holds up given it's a water-cooled card that is about a year and two months old. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But anyway, here it is, the GTX 970. But you might notice, one, there's no backplate, and two, it is the small style 970. It's pretty much the ITX card that they put an extended cooler on, hung the fan off the back of it, and then you've got a fan that is cooling all the components on the PCB, including the VRMs. And then of course you've got a radiator that is keeping the core itself nice and cool. Now I'm okay with there not being a backplate on this one. And I'm gonna let it slide because we've given up the backplate for a water cooler and kept the price point affordable. Yeah, a backplate might have made this thing cost 10 bucks more, uh, but there's gonna be some give and take, I guess. I would have liked to have seen a backplate. I really, really would have, but I kind of understand why they didn't do it on this one. Oh well. Anyway, the front of it here does have a blower style fan, which as I mentioned, is gonna blow air over the components that are on the PCB. And then we do have a really nice, technically it's a faux aluminum. It kind of looks like an aluminum shroud on here. Um, it is plastic, but it, it's very realistic. In fact, I couldn't really tell at first if it was real aluminum or not. So I emailed DVGA and asked them, is that real or not? Um, it is faux, uh, for, you know, fake. It's not real, but whatever. Inputs are the same. You got two DVIs, you got an HDMI uh, 2.0, as well as a display port. Um, and then just like the standard 970, because this is a standard reference card, not even like an SC or an SSC or a for the win. This is just straight up mini ITX. 970 form factor with, like I said, an extended cooler on here. Uh, so nothing custom about this whatsoever, which made me wonder, why'd you water cool the one that's not got any of the additional power phases or any of that stuff? Is it gonna matter? Well, guys, let's go ahead and find out right now. Transition. Okay, so what I'm really interested in today's video is just to see how far we can actually push this thing and does the water cooling really matter when it comes to the 970. So I'm not gonna be running through my entire gambit of games and stuff that I would normally benchmark simply because we've done so many different 970 reviews. And given the fact that this is basically an NVIDIA standard PCB, even the short PCB, I'm not gonna waste a lot of your viewer time. I know the questions here really are, does it overclock really well? Does the, over, does the water cooling really matter? And how cool does it really run? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be using some Valley Benchmark here, and then we will do one real world benchmark because you guys wanna see more of those real world benchmarks. And we will take a look at, uh, we'll look at Battlefront. Cause I think Battlefront, although it's a new game, it's using an older engine. A lot of graphics cards can really push Battlefront. And I thought we'd see how it performs all the way up to 4K on this graphics card. Now, right now you can see we're idling at 27 degrees Celsius, which is actually very, very good. Uh, let's do this now. Let's go ahead and run Valley here. Let's let it run for just a few seconds, actually. Let's see what this card is boosting up to by itself. And then we will go ahead and uh, we will 
see how well this thing is able to overclock. Now I'm using EVGA Precision 16, and the reason for that is I wanna make sure that by using something like MSI Afterburner, uh, there's no missing functions. Sometimes EVGA cards, like the Kingpin card, uh, there's a lot of functions that are unlocked in EVGA, considering it's their in-house software. I wanna make sure that we are using, you know, the we're getting full potential out of this card by not maybe somehow limiting it by using MSI Afterburner. So Valley Benchmarks, what I'm using here, Extreme HD, which is basically 1080p, and all the settings pretty much are maxed out when you do Extreme HD. And we're gonna go ahead and see how this thing does. Now there is also gonna be an overlay on screen here, uh, up on the left-hand side. It's gonna be probably a little bit difficult to see simply because it is uh, kind of overlaying on top of Valley there. And you can see it boosted up to 1,354 megahertz. Memory clock is at 3506, and the GPU temperature is sitting at about 35C. So we'll let this go here for um, just a couple of minutes. Maybe I'll, I'll fast forward here. We'll let this go for a couple of minutes, and we'll see what the max temperature ended up being. As you can see, too, the memory usage is only sitting at about, um, about one gigabyte of usage, which is pretty typical for a synthetic benchmark like this. It's, it's all on a track. It's pre-rendered, and it's not going to be using up too much of your VRAM. After all, it is, it is a 970, which means we do only have 3.5 gigabytes of high-speed VRAM available to the card. So if you start pushing really high-end resolutions like 4K and stuff, you might start bumping up into that cap. Temperature sitting right now at 39C. It's probably gonna peak right around here based on some experiences I've already had with this card, because I have been playing around with this card obviously prior to this video. Uh, I like to give you guys raw impressions and reactions and stuff, but at the same time, I kind of got to know what I'm getting myself into, make sure the card is working, make sure it's not dead or needs to be R made. Now, as you can see here, 1354 megahertz is where we've pretty much peaked out here. It's stuck there though. It hasn't been fluctuating at all. Uh, GPU boost 2.0. It's sitting about where the air-cooled card would be. I, you know, I do have multiple uh, EVGA SSC 970s here, which are custom PCBs, and they do also sit right around the same mark when it comes to GPU boost. So the water cooling initially is not really making it go any farther in terms of GPU boost 2.0, but of course we care about how far we can push this thing. And does the water cooling really affect your max overclocks? I and mean, that's kind of the point of today's video. Also too, you can see we did uh, hit 41C for a minute there. It's also important to note that this room is closed right now. There's no airflow into this room, no air conditioner. So the temperature is going to probably rise a little bit considering the fact that we are uh, you know, in a closed room here. Now, one other thing I want to do real quick is I want to go ahead and run the synthetic benchmark here, get a score, because I want to see how far the score also improves when it comes to, you know, the overclocking on this. All right, so the test is done. Here are our numbers, an average FPS of 57.8, score of 2418, minimum of 28.8, and a max of 108.8. There's a lot of eights here, eight, 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 eight. Uh, so anyway, that is our baseline temperatures stuck to about 42C, which I'm actually surprised it didn't go higher than that considering this room is warming up. Even though it's December, it is gonna be 85 degrees Fahrenheit here today. Good old California. All right, so let's go ahead and close this and let's do some benchmarking. What I also like about this card is just how fast the temperatures come down. As you can see, we're already down to 36, and it will go all the way back down into uh, about 30 flat, high 20s, uh, no problem whatsoever. Now, the fan, just like on the uh, 980 Hybrid and 980 Ti Hybrid, this controls the onboard fan that is actually on the PCB, not the fan that's on the radiator. I do still wish that they would have made the fan on the radiator controllable as that's gonna more or less control your temperatures, not the fan on the PCB. So that's something I really wish would have been the case. Although this is at, at adding active cooling to the VRMs and it's blowing air over the PCB, which is keeping all of those components cool. So. I, I wish that there would have been like other brands are doing, allowing you to control the fan on the radiator. A few moments later. So you can see right here, the numbers are 1560 megahertz. Uh, it's a plus 206 on the core. Really plus 205 is where I, where I considered it to be the most stable, but uh, my OCD was not liking 1559 on the core. So I made it 1560. 
Uh, memory overclock was 3758 total, so that's a plus 250 on the memory, which was giving us uh, was giving us about a 7516 megahertz effective RAM speed, which is pretty good. You can see our max temperature here is 42C. I've had this thing running for a little while now doing some stability testing. Uh, in fact, it's been running for about, uh, well, about 20 minutes now. And then I restarted the test for this particular take. What we're gonna do now is go ahead and hit F9 to start the benchmark. And then we are going to see how much the score and the averages and stuff actually improved, if at all. So we'll go ahead and fast forward this here so we don't waste too much of your valuable YouTube watching time. Okay, so you can see our score came up to 2691. Average FPS came up quite a few to 64.3. Minimum 31.7 and a max all the way up to 122.2. So you can see we gained quite a bit by overclocking this card. All right, let's go ahead and check out some Battlefront and see how this thing can do. So the settings here in Star Wars, we'll just do a quick test here with 1080p, 1440, and 4K. Uh, everything is on high settings here, whatever the high preset is. Oh, we're not gonna do Ah, uh, screw it. Let's do Ultra. We'll do the Ultra preset. So FPS is looking pretty good here. I mean, but the game is not very demanding, which is one of the reasons why we're doing this. Yeah, I don't hide around the corner on me. Oh, oh, no, no. I'm about to kill a friend. So you can see we're getting well over 100 FPS here in 1080p mode. Constantly over 100 FPS. I mean, he's got some dips here in the low 100s. Let's do this now. Let's go ahead and change this to 1440p and see how it does. Still over 60 FPS, it looks like. But FPS, as you can see, even in 1440p, is really, really good. I'm not having any problems playing here. Oh, I killed myself. All right, let's do 4K. See how 4K is doing. A single 970. Playing some 4K here. Looks like we're chilling in the 40s. That's actually really good. Everything looks so sharp and so pretty. This game is so freaking pretty, I swear. I love how pretty this game is. down to the 30s in this room here. There's a lot of lighting in here though. I like first person view. A lot of people give me a hard time like, no, you should play in third person. I like first person. That's why it's an FPS, it's not a TPS. It's not a third person shooter. It's FPS, biatch. Well, I think that ought to give you guys some ideas of what to expect with the performance of this 970. So let's get out of here with some final thoughts. You know, this is a really interesting time for this card to come out, if you ask me, because the 970 has been under a lot of fire, not only because of the crossbar issue with the RAM, making it 3.5 gigabytes and not a true 4 gigabyte card, but the fact that AMD's 300 series really targeted the 970 and trying to kick the 970 off of its perch as being the best bang for buck uh, graphics card when it comes to system builders and gamers. Now, I was really surprised that EVGA went the route of making a hybrid 970, considering the card is over a year old. I mean, the card came out in September of 2014, well over a year ago. So why bring the hybrid series to the 970? Well, obviously that's because there's a lot of benefits still to owning a 970 today. And considering they already have hybrids on the 980 and 980 Ti and Titan X cards, it really made sense for them to do this. Now, I was concerned when they first hit me up about this card and asking me to do this review was, is there a way I could do this review and have it m not just be nothing but me talking about it didn't make sense to put a water cooler on a 970. But considering they kept the price at $399 for this water cooled card, uh, yeah, it doesn't have a back plate, but I think I'll let it slide on this one considering we can give it the back plate get a water cooling solution on here. This kind of overclocking, these kinds of temperatures, the temperatures never went above 43 degrees Celsius. I think now having a water cooling solution uh, at this price point of 399 does make a lot of sense. Now it's hundred dollars less than a 980, but this thing overclocked is giving you 980 performance. In fact, it's very, very close to 980 overclock performance. It's not that far off. Now I'm definitely gonna have to do a video in the future where I take this card and put it up against a 980. Now obviously the 980 will beat it stock for stock. And once you overclock the 980, it will pull ahead of 
the 971 overclocked, even this water-cooled card. But it's important to take a look at price to performance ratio, and I really want to compare what the FPS per dollar is between a 980 and the 970 hybrid. It's definitely worth taking a look at. Like I said, $100 cheaper, and you're getting this kind of performance. So if you guys wanna see that video, make sure you let me know in the comments if you guys are interested in that performance per dollar. And then we'll do the same thing with like this card versus a 390, considering this is right around the price of a 390 on AMD's side. In fact, I even told EVGA that they might have shot themselves in the foot by this video proving that you don't need custom high-end PCBs to get really good overclocking, unless you're gonna be doing something like LN2 or serious voltage modding. But even then you would be running, not even necessarily water, you'd be running like liquid nitrogen or even a chill system some sort on your card to keep those temperatures under check once you start getting like two volts of you know GPU core. Time to get out of here guys. Thanks for watching. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming. Like I said, I've got a complete system giveaway I'm gonna be doing. So make sure you stay subscribed so that you can check that out. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna build it. We're gonna see how it does. And then we are going to give the thing away, including a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. You don't wanna miss that. All right guys, thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.